Hey everyone and welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial. In this video we will talk about 3D infusion. This video is an introduction to 3D infusion in DaVinci Resolve. And before we start, DaVinci Resolve isn't a fully capable 3D software. It's not like Blender or Maya. So there is a limitation to what you can do in DaVinci Resolve. So let's go to the effect and from the effects select fusion composition drop it in your timeline click on it go to fusion to start with 3d we have this section of the toolbar where we have icons or nodes for 3d and they are image plane shape 3d text 3d and you have the merge camera light and 3d render to start with we want to bring a shape 3d drag it to one of your monitor let's make this only one monitor or one viewport from this node go to controls we have a drop down menu and we can select cube sphere and so on so let's start with a sphere this drop down menu allow you to select between wireframe and solid turn off wireframe to see how the solid looks then you have light then you have shadow there is not much difference between light and shadow but when we add a light using uh, something like this down here we can get a shadow from this object on other objects around it but if you don't want to see the shadow we can turn it off let's talk about how to navigate in the 3d viewport so if you hold middle mouse button you move your camera right to left up and down which is called panning and if I hold alt and middle mouse this is rotating around your object and if I hold control and scroll up and down you zoom in and out next if we want to move this object like physically move it either we go to transform and we use these options down here or the other way around is to use these options up here so you have the first one which is transfer or move the second is rotate then scale so with the move selected i can move my object selecting one of the axes and you can select the middle part and just move it freely then if we go to rotate same thing we have rotation around multiple axes and then we have a scale scale from the middle it will scale uniformly and if i select one of these it should scale it on that axis but at the moment it's not doing it because we have the lock option is on uncheck it so now let me just reset these values and if i were to move these you can see what's going on now let's add multiple objects the way to do this is by dragging another shape 3d node select what you want it to be so let's say we want to have a cylinder and to see this object either you drag it here or the other way is if you want to see them both we drag from the output of this one to the output of this one or simply just add a merge node so by dragging this to this create a merge node and if i drag it up here there is my cylinder and there is my sphere if i go back to my shape object in the cylinder we have option to close the top and the bottom called caps bottom and top and let's move it to the side so we can see both of them but before we do add a light let me just grab a render node the reason why we need the render node is because we can't connect this directly to the media out we have to connect it first to a render node and then we connect this to the media out now if I drag this as you can see we have something here so if I select my merge node and then click on my camera we add a camera this will help me change the framing and we move it back like this in this case we want to have both the 3d and the media out and we start moving my camera back until i get the perfect framing i want to my 3d object a cool thing with the camera that you can use is if you go to the camera go to transform there is option to use a target if you activate the target it will give you this box here if i move it away now it's not looking at any of these objects if i want to bring it back i'll move it and put it wherever i want and you can animate this so if i were to move my object it will keep looking at those two objects now we don't have the light information like we did from this drop down menu in my final image and to do that we need to go to the render node and there is in the lighting there is two options lighting and there is shadow when we do this my object turned to black and the reason why that's because we don't have like real physical light you need to bring something like this spotlight or if you want to have more option just go to tools and from tools 3d and if you want to drop down there is lights if i select lights there is ambient light there is directional light there is point light and a spotlight 
The ambient light is just simply a fill light. It does not have a shadow. So kind of it make your object flat. But for now, we'll use a direction light because I think it's one of the easiest lights to work with. So we will grab the direction light, then connect it to my merge node. Once we add it, as you can see, there it is. This is my light. So let's look at the light in my viewport because this is direction light. The position of my light doesn't matter. Like it could be anywhere. All that matter with the direction light is from its name is a direction. So if I go to the rotation and we start changing my light, you can see that it's changing both here and in the final render. So let's go now to the direction light and let's introduce the shadow. So there is a shadow here. So let me just change the angle of this light to show you the shadow. You can not see it in the final render and that's because simply we want to go to the render node and change it from software to OpenGL. And there it is, we have more shadow. Now in the shadow, if I go back to the light, we can add the softness. So if I select constant, it will make my shadow much cleaner and we can change the slider to even blur it out even more. We can change the shadow map size to make it higher resolution, but this will be too heavy. Like sometimes it will make your scene very heavy. So to avoid this, we will usually leave these as the final step. Even in the renderer, I'll keep it set to software because it make it much easier and smoother to work with it. I want to talk also about the spotlight. Now, once we added a spotlight for it to affect my object, I need to move it away because with the spotlight, the position does matter. So I'll move it away. And there is a lot of options. You should go and explore these options, but we will talk about some of the main ones. So the spotlight, if I go to transform, we have a target similar to the camera. So we can move the target wherever I want it. So maybe like here. And another cool option with the spotlight is if I select the spotlight and go to control, go to the decay type, we can set this linear or quadratic. And this means that my light will start fading depending on the distance between my light and my objects. So in this case, it's almost not doing anything. So we'll make this up to like 15. Now it's much more brighter. If I move it closer, it get even brighter. And if I move it further away, it starts fading away. So for example, let me just disconnect my directional light. So now the only light that's affecting my object is the spotlight. Move it close, it get brighter brighter, move it away, it start fading away. Last thing we need to go to the material, select your shape 3D and select material. And he will talk about how to change things like the color of your material and stuff like that. So let me just bring my light closer so it's much more brighter. And if I go back to the shape 3D and we can change it, for example, like something like red, and for this one, maybe we'll make it another color. And another option, specular. With the specular, we can change the intensity and we can change the exponent. So the exponent is simply how sharp the reflection or the highlight. The wider it is, the less sharp, which means your material have rougher surface. We can go beyond the highest limit here, which is 100. We can go to a 200 by entering this value. Same thing for the intensity, we can go to two or even higher like three which make this shiner and much more reflective so now if i go back to my timeline so if i add something below it you can see that my 3d objects now on top of my footage we can do whatever we want so this can be a logo it can be anything you want go back to fusion again another thing that i wanted to uh, point out is ambient light so if i add an ambient light to reduce some of the darkness so now if i go back as you can see it's not as dark so that's a nice addition you can use it to make it more brighter the final result. You can also connect to this merge node a text. We can add everything to one merge node if you want. If you don't want to have one merge node, you can have multiple of them. The thing is, if you connect a light to a merge node, that means that this is this light is connected to this merge node only. So like, let's say my text, let me just quickly add a text here and let's add an extrusion to it. If you want to know more about 3D text, I have a video on my channel about that topic. Go and watch it to know more. So now uh, I'll just drag my 3D text here. Now I want to add this to this merge node, but instead of connecting it directly like so, so like we could do this, but instead I want to add it to its own merge node. So we will connect this to a merge node and I'll drag the merge node up here. As you can tell now, the light is not affecting it. Whereas when I connect it directly up here, let me just disconnect this one, we have the light affecting the text. But if I were to connect it 
down there it does not have light simply because all the lights are connected to the first merge node you could keep it this way and have your own lights that's if you want it but if you let's say want to take the effect of these lights and make them affect the text down here select the first merge node if you select it there is an option to pass the light click it the light will affect everything you do the same thing with this one if you want to connect it with other 3d object and now let's connect this to the render node instead go back to my camera and change my framing I'll move the camera target up here and maybe move it slightly there so if I go back to my timeline there it is we have a 3d object added to my scene finally I forgot to mention that any one of these attributes animatable so for example like we could change the light color over time so let's say I select the spotlight and then animate my light start with white then like at 15 we switch to red and maybe on 30 we go to green and so on so when you go back to your main timeline there it is it will take some time for this to render well that's it for today's video hope you liked it don't forget to leave a like subscribe and hit the notification bell